and we are live ladies and gentlemen let's share the stream real quick send it to your your mama your daddy your grandpappies your grandmammies send the stream everyone come see how good i look <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, paste. Paste the strams. All right. <clears throat> I will also record. Hold up. Let me bring this over here. That's all good. That's all good. In the hood. All right. Uh, we're live. How's it going, everybody? Let me, let me just hit the record button. How's it going, everybody? I am Drifty from Driftwood Gaming, and I'm joined with my wife, T. Hello. And Human, the 580J winner uh, with his game, Metastasis. How are you doing, Human? Doing great. Um, surprised I'm here, but I really appreciate it. It's an awesome. honor. Oh, cool. So uh, we're, we're blessed to have you on the show. Thank you for coming to our little thing. Yeah. We plan to do a few episodes. Uh, we're trying to rush out five or six episodes and then have this on the back burner for future uh, like content ideas. So maybe once every two weeks we'll do another how do they do that episode, bring in a guest or every week. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see what happens. But uh, this is the winning game. This is the champion game of, of all the games in the competition. Metastasis was the winner. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, everybody seemed kind of unanimous, and second place was like several points away mm -hmm. from becoming like even contending. So it was clear this was like, this was the clear winner. Yeah. Um, and then uh, all the money from second place got forwarded to first place, and then first place, which was human, said donate it to charity. So we. Which is uh, awesome. Yeah, we did that. We donated it to charity. We got um, an envelope sent to us. From Johns Hopkins. John Hopkins. Johns Hopkins. <laughs> That's how it's John Hopkins. John yeah. Hopkins. Um, and we're like, hey, okay. Um, we we donated it on behalf of someone human. Um, we just I didn't yeah. want to put your full name. I don't know your full name. Um, but but yeah. I'm sure, they were confused by that. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no, nah, I'm sure they don't care. It's money. They, they just oh, they don't, don't have questions. They and, get money. It's in fine. this day and age, I bet you a lot of donations are done under screen names. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and they, what are they gonna investigate? We got to see where all of this money where we're getting these hundred dollars, hundred twenty five dollars. You know. They don't care. It's just actually, another hundred twenty five dollars drop in the bucket. It's probably actually a good way to launder money. I don't know. You know, I think. I think people have done that in the past. Probably. I mean, it seems pretty yeah. convenient. You just use a avatar name, quote unquote, and you know, because people can get like virtual. No, what's it called when you're like in the United States, but it looks like you're surfing in Sweden or something? VP. Visas. No, no. Um, <laughs> I know it, but I can't think of Listen, the word. Listen, it doesn't matter. Okay, we don't fine. need to talk to talk All to right. people about how to launder money. Money. <laughs> Why not? Uh, because that's not part it of this show. It's perfectly legitimate to me. Mm, I think. <laughs> hey, Drag, how you doing? Okay, Thanks fine. For, for joining us. I've moved on. Yeah, we're gonna move I'll past my, your my money, money laundering, laundering secrets ideas. all to myself. Sorry, guys. I want to open the game and just take a look at the project. This is a beautiful little title screen we've got right here. Yes, it is. And then it goes to this, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> not as beautiful. But uh, I think you, know you had to transfer the player and show choice, didn't you? Is that how you did this? You, you, you do what you can. Oh, that is um, like that, what is that default show MV thing? Made with MV. So oh, really? Choose what picture to show with made with MV. Interesting. Since you allowed a splash page, I just found some picture that looked pretty and made that my made with that splash page. Is clever. That, that makes sense like because that. you're not allowed to do custom art for your title screen. But you could do a splash but screen. You could make your title <laughs> pseudo title screen with a custom art. I, right. I think that did play a role in people's minds because they see something custom and they're yeah. already primed to like it more. Right. right. So um, that's what. That's I, clever. This clever. was why I voted against the idea of doing this because. <laughs> Subconsciously, you're. It's like if you don't, then you're going to be at a disadvantage. Yeah. So it's like if we allow it, then everybody should be doing it. You know. I wanted to, but I ran out of time. 
Yeah, as another thing, we were t time restricting, and so I voted against the idea of yeah. allowing that. I voted uh, for it, but it did give us a few custom pieces to look at throughout, mm -hmm. the, and, give, and it gave people the chance to customize a logo and a company name yeah. and put that out front. And I mean, whatnot. I feel like that falls under branding if it's a splash screen, but that's why I, that's why I voted yes. Yeah, it. I was outvoted, so like yeah. it was allowed, and it was it was clearly put in the rules that you can have custom splash screen. But it was cool that it was used with the made with MV plugin. That's pretty cool. So the yeah, whole. Yeah. I, go ahead. I definitely recommend. You know, if people are doing these game jams, you have to work within these creative constraints. So I knew right away as soon as this opened up that I had to make it stand out and put that title page to start so that more people would take a look and. Yeah. Right. The game a chance. That's so I like you know, these limitations, I think, breed creativity, and taking advantage of that is a huge thing that I tried to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was the whole point, and that's why, like, we weren't trying to be super um, hypercritical if people misunderstood the rules or whatever, because we wanted people to push the boundaries and be creative with right. the RTB and, and see what they could RTB the RTP see what they could come up with with mm -hmm. the same old same old stuff. See how they could make it look new. It was really fun. Yeah. I mean, it's really uh, kind of monumental when you are allowed to use custom stuff inside this limitation of just RTP. But you can, well, there's an exception here. You need to take advantage of those exceptions. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't want people to have to go through that. And I was like, no, nah, let's not allow that. Therefore, people won't have to do it. Therefore, we're on a much like more even keel. I mean, it's still fair. It, it, we made the rules, and you, mm -hmm. you can either take advantage or you could yeah. not. And uh, I think if you really looked deep and you took advantage of all of the stipulations that we included, you can see it, it does pay off mm -hmm. and the custom work that you put in has paid off as well. Yeah. Um, metaphorically, because you've, you've got this uh, this win under your belt. Who would have thought you would we would be spending um, so much time talking about the splash screen? We're not even into the game yet. That's the beautiful <laughs> thing about these podcasts, this, this <laughs> podcast type of thing. It's really just a discussion. It's an open forum. We've got the chat going. How's it going, Damien, Vero Claw, Pika Mula Mouse, Psycho Gaming. It's good to see you guys here. Borrow B with Early Bird, um, Drag. You guys are great. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you have any specific questions about Metastasis, please let us know. Hey, Realtron. Um, and we'll, you know, we have the dev with us. So uh, Human is here to tell us uh, about his game when we have questions. How did he do it? So obviously a key feature to this game is we're controlling switches outside of uh, the game, essentially. So the, the program is running, but, like, the save files are allowing... Or switches to be modified right like so that you can leave a save file go back to the menu but those meta switches are still toggled on or off or however uh, they were set up in the previous playthrough uh, and I've seen this before but you did it in an interesting way I'm gonna look at the plugin manager real quick I want to see <laughs> if what what plugins you're using you do have quite a few but i've seen of course this is about the same amount of a mess of <laughs> no, you, a lot of them i didn't use they were a lot of the plugins in there were aspirational <laughs> just ideas so, that you wanted to get to if you had time yeah exactly i needed a couple more months to work on it <laughs> yeah um, i know that feeling you want to look for is the is it irena meta switches Oh, sorry, Olivia Meta Controls, that's what it is. It's under skill plugins for no reason. <laughs> I love okay. that. It's under skill plugins for no reason. So it's here like we... you have a, an illusion of organization there with those subheadings. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> also aspirational. <laughs> um, you'll see that my project in as to say Vino's or Vero Claws or yours. It's um it's kinda a hot mess under the hood. Yeah. Mine was I would say you don't have to be that good at organizing like Vino to do something interesting. I hope to reach his levels one day, but um, not pretty under there. I'm wondering, is it is it just me, or are you uh, breaking up a little bit? It's probably probably his internet connection. Your internet connection. Yeah, you sounded kind of tinny over there, human. Yeah, I, I could still understand. Okay. We're, we're doing okay. I mean... What, what do you do with that information? Right, you know what I mean? Right. You can't do anything with that information. Make so sure that your uh, auxiliary cord is plugged in all the way. Sometimes I'm sure it's just a connection thing. Yeah. yeah it, it happens. Um, 
Yeah, I'll make my voice less tinny. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What do you do with that information? Stop I don't being, even acknowledge stop it. Stop being a robot, human. I, Just stop it. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> the people are like, it's Driftbot! Because <laughs> this happened to me before. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, you, you can't do anything with that. We're moving on. Uh, so you're using uh, Olivia meta controls to kind of toggle these switches off and on. Uh, I've never used this plugin, but I do. I have heard of it before. Um, you are allowed to edit this code. Did you do any uh, editing of plugins or any custom scripts in this game? Uh, no. I mean, I don't really know how to do that stuff. I had to look up look up some script calls and things like that. But really, I just used the the basic commands from the plugin itself, the basic tags. Barrow Claw is funny. <laughs> human is failing at humaning. I am a human. I have compassion. It's almost like you, you really want people to believe that you're human. So. <laughs> you sound like a robot on the street. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that no, bad. no, no. You actually sound really good now. So we have two metas. We have global meta and local meta. So I want to read this real quick. Place this in the name of a switch or variable that you want to have its data persist across different saves and even new games. This does not have to be the full name. It can be just a part of the switch or variable's name. So an example, you just, you so it browses, this plugin looks at the game switches. Let me open, let me create a little event here. And if I were to go to like control switches and, and make a new switch, I would put in a name here. Like, so meta, is that, is that a meta one? Oh, you do a, a note tag at the end. Yeah, that's right. I think there's a few ways to do it, but I just made that note tag, like global meta, the end or beginning works. Huh. Interesting. Oh, all you have to do is include this note tag inside the name of the switch? Yeah, that's right. That's it. Wow. I've okay. never seen a plugin do that before. I've seen I've seen this before, but I've never seen it used in a very good creative way where the focus is kind of that idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it was. It, this game was very novel in that... Um, yeah. Uh, it hasn't been used in a way to show off its capabilities and like what it could be used for. Like, um, I wanted to point out that this is one of Olivia's free plugins too. Yeah. Wow. Cool. So you know, anyone can who like kind of knows what they're doing could take this idea and do cool stuff with it. I think. Yeah. Um, so v Vero Claw, no, who is it? Realtron says this is a six to eight dollar paid plugin. Olivia has a lot of plugins, and she's you got every right to charge for her plugins. Um, but I think this is human saying this is a free one. Yeah. So, this is a free one. I'm checking the page right now on itch. Yep. Hey, Corey Von Davis, what's up? Hey, Corey Davis, thank you so much <laughs> for the twenty dollar super chat popping in uh, like a boss, dropping dropping a twenty right on. <laughs> his intro he's blinging he comes I'm in here blinging. what's going on guys <laughs> he, he comes in and it just starts raining every time <laughs> thank you for tuning in Corey sir Corey Van Davis um, we are looking at metastasis with human and uh, we're taking a look at how Olivia's plugin is simple to use uh, it's a free one from her and you simply use the global meta note tag inside the name of a switch to make it persist through different save games and even creating a new game. So, uh, example, you start a new game and you toggle a switch in game that has global meta on it. Then when you exit the game and come back into the game, that switch is still on. That's awesome. Uh, otherwise, it, when you enter a new game, uh, it would be set to off. So another game that used that to great success was Undertale. They use that same mechanic. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Yep. In fact, you can delete all the saves um, on your computer, and I still think it saves some information. So it has like a uh, a backdoor save yeah. somewhere <laughs> onto your like contemporary files or something, and yeah. just stays there, a floating save file. I wonder if it's used JSON or if it's actually locking it like I do in GMS2. Yeah, I don't know. That's if you can here. figure it out, that would be awesome because <laughs> these meta switches made play testing really, really challenging. I had oh, to man. manually reset a lot of stuff. If you're play testing, those meta uh, switches, they stay switched on or off throughout all of the temporary uh, play testing files. So, right. you know, I had a lot of annoying stuff to uh, go through and polish the game. 
So, um, Veroclaw asks, it works with switches and vari variables? Does it work with both? That's right. Yeah. It works with both in exactly the same way. You just put global meta or local meta nice. tag and switch your vari it's variable. It's simple but tedious. It's, yeah, it stores everything because we're yeah. so used to everything being set to zero, all the variables zero, right. all the switches set to off when we leave and come back. But with this, they stay on, and they stay on the number and the value that was there. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you could, you know how in some mobile games you have like this little counter and it like it counts down and you have to wait like a certain amount of time in, unless you pay right what if you could do that sort of thing in a single player aspect without the pay to win thing mm -hmm. but just have, have certain timers and you make the timers exist in real time yeah so you have certain rewards i don't know how that would work because i think um you would have to have it running as a as a server and then have the right. timer constantly yeah. running and then it pauses if it gets shut down i don't know if that's even feasible because like what if you just want to put your game down for a week and come back it, it'll remain where it was yeah. on the timer yeah it would have to be like real gameplay time it would have to be gameplay time yeah. mm -hmm. and then there's many ways to do that mm -hmm. i'm just kind of spitballing ideas <laughs> with this thinking if, out loud we are <laughs> planning on the next series because we have the today's show and we have another show tomorrow on friday Wait, today's We're going to do no, Let's Make a Game Thursday. with the Audience. We'll do Friday AMA. Uh, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. starting Monday. And Monday. on Friday's AMA, we'll do a spit spitball what we're going to work on for the game. Because uh -huh. we have an idea we're going to be making. I'm game. so excited. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It's a, <laughs> but we'll keep this series going in the background. Um, so we have a lot of interesting plugins here. A lot of Yan Flies, But not just Yan Fly. We have a lot of Olivia's mixed in. We got Mog Hunter mixed in. Uh, and some Arena. Um, is there anything that you, what was bringing it back to, to human um, what was the thing that you got um, better at during the process of this what was the thing that you what aspect of game making did you improve the most throughout the process of making metastasis is that too tough of a question <laughs> did we lose did we Are lose human? with us human I think we lost human. I think we lost Oh, no. I don't want to load this. <laughs> Dang it. We lost human. Okay. That's fine. Did I did I crash Discord? No, Discord is here. Human is currently in the chat. Yeah. But not responding. I think he had to go to the bathroom or something. Well, you know, he's got a two-year-old. A two-year-old. You know he how that goes. Have, yes. It could have been like an instant drop of the hat. I have to get up and do something right the two, now. The two year old, the two year old is about to stick a fork in the outlet. Right. Or, jump out of my chair. Or they just yeah. pooped up their back or down their. Oh yeah. Or, or like you're guy. just holding them and they just poop all over you. <laughs> and uh, sometimes, okay, there he goes. He must have. He. It seemed like he had a connection issue. Yeah. Because it was like. Right. 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 <laughs> Human is pre booty. <laughs> this will never be forgotten. Now Human is now. It's a, a robot it's, named Human. Yeah. Human. <laughs> It's a meme now, human. You can't get away from it. He's going to watch this back later and just be like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. My um, younger son, when he was seven, decided it was a good idea to put a paperclip in an, in an outlet because he saw it on the that stupid game all these YouTubers would play where the baby's trying to kill itself and the dad's trying to keep it from killing itself. Yeah, he decided that it was a good idea to, to emulate that game, and he put a paperclip in an outlet and burned himself. Dang. Yeah. Hold up. It was, it was, here. I mean, I'd be lying to say that I didn't laugh at him. <laughs> he also laughed, though. He was not crying. He laughed. <laughs> so, um, uh, Human is messaging me right now. He said, my, sorry, I'm back. My internet just dropped. And that's understandable. It happens. So he's going to try to, um, I think he's talking with mobile. I think he's going to try to reconnect when he can, but we're going to keep looking at this project Yeah. Um, and while uh, his connection, he figures out what's going on. So um, the thing about this now is since uh, we're play testing um, the first time, everything is off and all the switches are set, all the variables are set to zero. zero. But if we were to like begin anew to, to play test something and we change, we change something, like even if I were to just... Any event that has a global um, modifier on it, mm -hmm. like this probably one. walking that right here event, might yeah. change something yep. in a variable. And th then so you won't get this dialogue again. Right. Yeah. All right. Lost connection, but I think I'm back. Hey, welcome, welcome back. back. I hope your, your your reboot time needs some some help. You need to get an SSD or something like that. That wasn't too. That wasn't I'm too talking bad. about Cyberhuman. 
Oh, oh. It's, it's a bad joke. It's <laughs> a bad joke. <laughs> You're supposed Upgrade to laugh. Upgrade your hard drive to an SSD, human. <laughs> you'll boot faster, human. You'll, you'll boot faster. <laughs> I'm working on it. All right, thanks. <laughs> So we jumped into the game and we were just kind of talking about how um, we get these cutscenes for the first time um, and we'll, even if we were to start a new game at this point and we wanted to play test them again, we would have to manually turn off those switches. How did you, what was your um, process? I, I, I'm going to go back to the question I asked you when you dropped. Uh, what was your process for play testing? Like you would do make a change and then would you just reset all the switches and go back into it? Yeah, that's sort of how it worked. Um, I set up some hotkeys, like if you press R, it should reset all the switches, or at least it did when I was playtesting. Um, I set up a few other hotkeys for individual switches, like for levels and things like that. So when I was playtesting certain things, I would just kind of key a hotkey to reset a certain set of switches, and that would make it a little easier to go back and forth keep on trying. Did you right. turn those on or off when you when you when you uploaded your game, or can you like get your game off of itch and press R and reset all the switches halfway through? <laughs> well, this is how much of a fool I am. I I must have uploaded my game like eight times trying to get it just right. The first time I uploaded it, I forgot to turn off those hotkey stuff, so <laughs> I made sure to do that. And then like seven or eight more times, I I found some other things that didn't make any sense, so. Um, I think it, it probably is not working now, but you could give it a try and see if it's broken. Okay, what key was that? Oh, God. It's R. Hey, Corey, Corey, R. Corey Van Davis. Sir Corey I got a Davis, question for you. What, what? $5 super chat. I'll be ROG001. Thank you so much for the super chat, Corey Davis. And then another, right now, $20 super chat from Corey Davis. Talco, you lie. <laughs> He says, geez, that's a lot of money. Corey, who's Rog? Is that your character for our game that we're going to be building soon? Raj? Ra Raj? Raj? Rog001. I don't know. I think well, if LOG is... Are you is, following the chat? If LOG is Log, then this is Rog. <laughs> 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 I think Raj is spelled with a, G, a J, right? Raj? Yeah. I don't know, is it an Indian name? Yeah. R-A-J uh, or R-O-G is like Rog, right? Yeah, it's Rog. You, I mean, you can say Roger. I think it's a character. There is always something you forget, says Yorkshire Pudding. Yes. Question for Human from Barrow Claw. Are you going to continue this project or is, or it was just game Jam exclusive? Because it were, it would be nice to see this further. Whew, I got through the question. <laughs> Um, I'm thinking about it. Um, I, when I do a project like this, I would kind of dream about this for that entire month. It's really hard for me to separate myself from a project, so it's a big emotional commitment. And I've got a kid, the one on a, on the way. So, you know, maybe one day. But there are a bunch of other projects. Congratulations! A bunch. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had entered another game into the uh, Hawktober Game Jam last year, did well as well, and so people said, hey, you should extend this, so um, it's hard for me to figure out to prioritize, but we'll see. I'll, I'll let you know, Vero, yeah. in touch yeah. with Vero, I'll, I'll tell him if I do anything cool with it. Also, I have doubts about whether I can make it any more complicated than this without kind of breaking my own mind, so... Uh -huh. um, if you want my opinion... Think. Uh, I would say just leave it what it is because it already showcases a specific thing and it's a fantastic entry into your demo reel if you ever were to just try to get someone to join your studio and just show them what you can do or join someone else's studio. Uh, just having this as a project on its own, it doesn't need to be anymore. It's what it was. It was 30 days and uh, you were working under these limitations and you won the competition and it was cash prize and like it's a great story how it is. It, the game it speaks for itself. I would just drop it and move on to something that's more you're more inspired to do or a new idea to add in addition to this. Yeah. That this would be, is... just be what I would do. $10 from Corey Davis, Super Chat. Thank you so much. I meant to put RPG, but the phone auto-cucumbered it and was adding <laughs> it to what adding on to what Tron said. So yeah, also That's an engine mean... by the way. Sorry to cut everyone off. I keep doing uh -huh. it, but that's an engine, the RPG 001. It's yes. a game engine, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
But yeah, um, also, if you are going to ever continue to develop a, gam a game jam... A jam game. Jam game. Yeah, Gadget there we go. I can speak words. Anyways, if you're ever going to develop it, like, you have to be realistic in your expectations. Like, I've been developing one for three years now, and yeah. it's not... It's actually less done than when I started. <laughs> you had more to show in the 30-day yeah. game jam than you do right now. However, everything looks much more it does. Uh, it looks beautiful better. and yeah. customized. And so you, you can um, take the idea of your game jam game and then completely remake it using all custom stuff. Yeah. And that's what T has stopped and started and stopped and started and stopped and started a hundred times. Yep. And she keeps getting better, which is great. But this is she's falling into the same pitfalls that I've seen a hundred times. Everyone does this. They work on something for months, and then by the end of them working on that, they realize, wow, I'm much better at mm -hmm. it. I, and then they realize, I don't like my first iterations. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I scrap the whole thing and, and start you, over. And then a lot of people scrap their early work and replace it with new stuff, but then that stuff, you're much better by the time you finish all of that again. And so you scrap it, and it's a never-ending process of throwing away your old work and making that's new true. stuff that's slightly better uh, when in reality you should just be accepting your work for what it is put that thing out there into the world and let it receive what it's supposed to receive keep working on the new project because if you ever want to make money in a game studio you have to put out a game every year yeah. pretty much unless you yeah. you know really knock it out of the park and you can float oh, on that what? for a while Arkea put out a tool today that makes me want to scrap it all over again <laughs> <laughs> don't you are she put out a character way. generator, and I'm thinking, boy, if I could just make some templates, I could, I could use that now. I already did like almost all the face art. You just need sprites. Just over. keep moving. Yeah. I mean, it's cool that you got a new tool, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess we are plugging Arkea's Vigistella's new character creator generator. Yeah. What is it? It's called the St v Vigistella. Vigistella character called. generator. Is that what it's called? I think so. I, I, I you're the one who it. bought it. I no, don't know. No, it's called Stella character. Generator. Stella character yeah. generator. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, it does look okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't really used it myself. I've just seen T use it for a few minutes, so I can't really say one way or the other. But, yeah. you know, it was made by, by Team Vigistella. Uh, Psycho Gaming, I'm Falling Drifty's advice in my jam game. Yep. And Yorkshire says good advice. It's my show. says, that describes every project I've started since 2014. Yep. I think it's you probably haven't story. released any, huh? Because yeah. you just keep scrapping your old work because it's not as good as your new work. And then... It's a, it's a vicious cycle that people have to accept that the game that they will be producing will not be the game that's in their head. It will be something like the game they have that's in their head. And you have to cut features and sacrifice and narrow scope to get a project out. And that's why game jams are so great. Because yeah. you're like, ah, I was limited. I can only do this. It's not fair. It's not, it's it not me. It gives you an excuse to put it out. But here's, yeah. where, it all, here's where it all ties together. Uh, people are connecting... The, their game to their own self-worth. Mm -hmm. And so they think if, uh, and I'm, I've done this too, people think that if they put out a game that sucks, then they suck as a person. Yeah. But you have to distinguish, you have to remove yourself from your physical beings. You are not what you own. You are not the thing you just created. You are not these things. You have these things. You have made these things. That They don't define you. You define you. So, um, I don't know. I, I guess I guess I got a you little. You went off on a rant. I went off on a little on a, rant. Yeah, you were on a rant. I, I'm trying to tell people <laughs> that um, don't lose your self worth because your art isn't what you want it to be, or uh -huh. because you can't code the a plugin the way you want. I'm keeping it this time, even if I have to cry, and I might cry, but I'm keeping it this time. Right. It's you know it's enough. Enough is enough. You Listen, gotta draw the line somewhere. with your default. Uh, RTP that you had in your game jam version of Understood, you made people cry. Uh huh. So if you can make people cry looking at some default RTP, <laughs> like bro, like you're good. You, the story is good. What the the timing of the last scene was very important, and music plays a bigger role than people understand. And you had that synced up perfectly. That's mm -hmm. a key moment, and I think the storyline and the revelation it all culminated properly. So you sequenced it perfectly. Yeah. Just keep that. Keep the sequence and the timing of the music so perfect, and, and you'll have uh, no problem mm -hmm. transferring uh, your what you captured in your thirty day project. Is that Lily's knocking on the door? Oh, okay. I got a question for Human. Human, is there anything in this project that we are taking for granted that's more complicated or, or complex than you know might seem on the surface that you'd like to explain? Um, I mean, if you look at the events, there's a lot of useless script 
scripts and codes and stuff like that that I wasted time on that didn't work. That's probably about it. Mm -hmm. uh, what were you going uh, for? Like, uh, what, what do you have one in particular you'd like to explain that you were trying to implement? Um, no, getting the levels to to be saved in between the different save files was really hard. So, mm -hmm. but you start at level 10. If you fight a skeleton and level up, you'll be at 11, even if you start a new game. Uh -huh. And that wasn't something that I could do easily really? um, just with the, the meta plugin. So, how so did you accomplish no, that? I tried doing some. That. So. Yeah, like I tried doing some stuff with experience and kind of adding experience based on some meta switches and it, um, it didn't really work. If you look at the common events, um, see, there is a load game event, I believe, which is common event number two. Mm -hmm. And there's some variables that I was messing with, um, variable one, two, three, Variable one, two, and three—they don't actually do anything. That was me kind of just trying to mess with um, global meta switches to make them sync up the levels. So, um, the project is more complicated than it looks because I tried to solve a lot of these difficult um, puzzles in programming in a lot of ways that did not work. Right. I, I can see what you're saying. Like you, you're trying a lot of ideas. Some of them had to be scrapped. Uh, in order to put out the game and you have a lot of extra code and things in the game that don't necessarily make any difference on the gameplay yeah that's right yeah so that's why you know if you take a look through my events there are a lot of things that not work or actually have an effect on the game but you no know, i i was too scared to delete stuff because <laughs> that might break things in a way i didn't un in ways i didn't understand and I can't really i can't keep track that well of right. all this stuff <laughs> That's what happens to big long projects too, because you start adding so many new things. Feature creep comes in, and you've you've got two hundred common events before you know, and you're only using like fifty of them. That's why it's so good to have a team, because then you can have somebody like Vino on your team, and he can take care of all the organization, <laughs> and you take care of other things. And you know, people that hate mapping don't have to do that. Somebody else can do it. People that hate battle systems. I love the idea of working on a team, but yeah. logistically and financially, it doesn't make a ton of sense to bring a lot of people on board. You need. You need a, a few people who are good at multiple things. Yes. Like this person can do this, 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 and this. This person can do this, this, and this, this. And on a big team, you don't want those people. No. So on a, indie dev is very different from AAA dev because when you're doing indie dev, you have to wear all the hats. You have to do everything. Mm -hmm. But in a big team, the bigger the team, the more specified you have to be. You don't want to walk into the studio of 100 people and be like, I can do pretty much anything. Yeah. Uh, I'm a jack of all trades. We'll be like, we got plenty of people like you. Just, you're gone. What are you specialized in they want they want someone to come in and be like i don't know how to draw i don't know how to do this but i understand the particle engine in this game and i understand how to make renders and draw and how to code like a shader they'll be like okay you're in you're in charge of our rendering department or whatever mm -hmm. and so you get that job because you specialize and you didn't need to know how to draw a thing but you're a part of you're on the art team yep. you know you could go into a big studio and say um I'm a technical artist, and you could not even know how to draw anything. You could be a terrible drawing, sketching, pixel art <laughs> You could be a artist. bad drawer. You could be a bad drawer, <laughs> and then go in and get a high-paying job as a technical artist, and you know what your job would be? You're very specialized. Your job is to take the JPEG format that they have and and add alpha data and put it into PNG format using different mm -hmm. tool software. applications. Your software. Or your, your job is to take this 3D model and reduce the number of polygons that it has and then re um, export those as uh, more uh, that don't, that look just as good or almost as good but run more optimal that's a technical artist and you could be terrible at it and you're still one of the highest paid artists on the team yeah uh, so there's there's more um, when you I guess what I'm trying to get into you said small studios and mm -hmm. small groups the bigger the group the more specialized you have to be absolutely but when you're all by yourself you've got to do everything which is kind of impossible for um, unlikely it, it's unlikely I mean, look it's, at not Valley. It's, it's not impossible that was one guy yeah yeah you got you got ape man and you got uh, Undertale. To Toby Toby uh, Fox no 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 Toby uh, Coyote <laughs> 
Too long. <laughs> Too long. I love Toby Fox. Anyway, um, yeah. So if you want to get into a bigger studio, specialize into one, into one specific thing. If you want to work in a smaller studio, specialize in a few things. And, yeah. and kind of, uh, you, you do have to wear the, I'm the... I'm the designer, which does, like, a lot of things, right? Everything. But, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you know what that means, though? What's you know, that? Everybody, we're going to get real right now. You know what that means? What's that mean? All of us indie game devs are lunatics. That's what it means. Are lunatics? Are lunatics. I was... Trying to run, or trying to wear every hat of a, a studio is just, it's crazy. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, I can't even do that. Like, that's why I don't have any... Um, like big games out, you know, because uh, the, the, one of them is miss is missing all the maps, the other is missing all the story, the mm -hmm. other one is missing like all of the things that I'm not super strong at. It's missing those things. Same here. I can't make a game with a good battle system. So <laughs> what we're doing now, moving into the future, is taking both of our ideas because ideas are um, ideas are not hard to come up with. Yeah, executing ideas is right. hard to do. That's what uh, that's what this series is going to be all about. It's just executing ideas, right? Essentially. Uh, I want to go back to the question that yeah. I asked, but first, we Vino, keep going down rabbit holes. <laughs> first, Vino, two dollars super chat. Thank you so much, Vino. Hype for human who donated his winnings to charity. Woo, he woo, did. Hype human. We, we donated all of the winnings. A and you too, Vino. Vino donated his winnings to human who donated all of them to the charity. So that's uh, very nice of you guys. Corey Davis with another ten dollars super chat. The, the boss. Uh, I got ideals for days coming in like like a big boss. You know here. what, Corey? You're gonna love our next series then, because we're gonna take some ideas from from people like you and put them in the game. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, Corey Davis has already dropped a lot of good ideas. I haven't been able to make all of them, mm -hmm. um, but I have made a few of them, and we put tips and tricks out. And speaking of that, those of you who are watching, thanks to Corey Davis, he has sponsored um, future tips and tricks videos. So if you have an idea that you would like to see made into a, a template that everyone can use, um, message me on Discord with your tips and tricks idea. And that $30 tier of Patreon has already been paid for and sponsored by Corey. So um, I will pick an idea that is uh, maybe um, easy to implement for people. I want to find something I could put it together in 5 to 10 minutes. They typically always end up 15 minutes, mm -hmm. even though I'm like, i got to get it down to 10 minutes. So I try to make this complicated idea and skill made into a 10-minute tutorial that's simple for everyone to understand, and they get this, these advanced features. So if you have ideas, you want to see them made into RPG Maker MV, message me, sponsored by Corey Davis, yep. and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll if see. you would like it's to no sponsor us. no guarantee if you message, because we have to choose from, you know, however many people are coming up with ideas. Absolutely. So sending one doesn't guarantee that it'll happen, but de definitely send them our way. Yeah. yeah. If you'd like to sponsor us, we have a Patreon and yeah. uh, PayPal and all that stuff. Uh, and of course, super chat. You guys are awesome. I want to go back to human. Um, I asked him a question when he disconnected, and he didn't get mm -hmm. to answer that question. Oh, okay. I don't know if he even heard it. Uh, I forgot the, the, the question was: throughout the process of this 580J game jam, um, what was the thing that you got the most better at throughout the process of working on metastasis, human? Um, I would say the understanding how to mess with switches was really integral to the entire game. I actually didn't know when I started this game that you could switch on and off a range of switches. That's how <laughs> how naive I was. So um learned that kind of two thirds of the way in. When I was resetting switches, I had to make a new um, kind of hotkey every single time or a new part of the event every single time. And then at, near the end, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm such a doofus. I could have done this in a much easier way. So um, you know, general competence is not necessary to do interesting things. <laughs> Just determination, <And> right? <laughs> determination, hard work, a lot of grit. Um, but I figured out a lot in the process of doing this. Absolutely. Uh if, if you got better using switches, then you got better as a game designer because the key fundamental thing behind coding and designing is understanding how to use and manipulate switches and variables. Mm -hmm. Those are the two key components to making anything move in, on a computer because a variable, two states, on or off, and it can trigger if things happen or if they don't. 
um, conditional statements, understanding conditional statements. And that's why you need to understand what a variable is and what a switch is. A switch is just a piece of memory, a very, very small piece of memory that stores two states, an I or an O, an on or an off, a one or a zero. And a variable, um, there are several types of variables. In RPG Maker MV, they store non-float values. They store integer values and float values will be like decimals like 1.653 that is a float value but if you try to reference that throughout the mv engine using js and pixie.js well it's going to say one yeah or it'll round yeah. up to two J js like, isn't precise when it comes to float values and it can bug certain algorithms out so I think just the way Katakawa and Dajika worked around that was to not multiply allow it. floats. Yeah, they yeah. just multiply it yeah. to the nearest, or, or they round it. Which, if I recall, that's the way you get around the bug. You Did, multiply does it, seal it. it. Is it sealing it to the next highest, or is it rounding it total? I think Because we looked at the code, Drag found it the other day. Yeah. I mentioned I knew it was there, and Drag actually cited it in the Discord. Um, Drag's awesome coder, by the way. Yeah. But I think that's the that's actually the um, solution, if I recall, because I did an algorithm that required that you multiply every value by a hundred, finish the um, calculation to so the algorithm, and then at the very end divide your sum or your your, your product by a hundred. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to to raise all the numbers, and so that they were not having any float values. Mm -hmm. Do your calculations in all integer values, yeah. and then re um, revert that number back to a um, a float, uh, a, a float value yes. at the end, but um, in in reality, with if you're using RPG Maker MV, you're using JS, you should stay away from all float values. is a is a good rule. Make all of your numbers non decimal. And now, and it's easy to do that. It really is because all you really have to do is um, multiply everything up to a factor of ten or a hundred. So if you've got these things that have increments and you know that you want to have a thousand degrees of incremental change, then you should probably have a thousand as your base number instead of one being the base number and then having one dot zero 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 zero. So just raise all the numbers up. If yeah. you want to have a skill that gives you a uh, gives you a level up every t every time you use it, but then have little food that gives you like parts of a level, then you can't use parts of a level. You have to make it so when you use the skill, say you get ten points, mm -hmm. uh, and instead of the, the level cap being a hundred, it's a thousand. So you're using a skill gives you a thousand, and then when you eat like a blueberry or something that gives you like a, a, a marginal uh, fractional increase, instead of giving you a decimal, it just gives you a one. Yeah, you know, so that's still an Essentially integer value. The principle. Yeah. You really just had to add factors of 10 until it's no longer a float. Right. Yeah. Um, Corey Davis says ceiling is up, floor is down. That is true. And round will determine <laughs> um, it'll go <laughs> up or down. Right. I, I am. Uh, that is a very good observation. <laughs> Thank you for the $2 <laughs> super chat. Damien says mathed out round, mathed out floor, mathed out seal, all fixed floating rounding values in MV. Yep. Uh, but but Damien, a good thing about that is instead of just fixing them, because sometimes it does it won't. Um, if you calculate using the um, the float values, you might have issues somewhere along the line. So like T was saying, instead of just rounding or flooring, get rid of the fact that you have float values in the first place and. Um, Basically, just use integers, mm -hmm. integer values. I know That's some how things. That's the engine is designed to work anyway. Some things you cannot not have a float because yeah. sometimes you divide something, you're going to have something dot three 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 right. three 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 three. But in that instance, you would round it before you factor it. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where Damien, I think that's what Damien's referring to. You need to round it or floor it or seal it at some point um, in order to get it to not have any issues along the whole uh, process. That's something I didn't know at the beginning of learning JS inside of MV. Mm -hmm. um, I originally started learning programming uh, in junior college uh, with C++. And so you don't have that problem. No, it's a more precise language mathematically. It's it doesn't have that issue. It's, it is class based, object oriented, mm -hmm. and and JS is pseudo. It's not class based, but you make proto. You make it's object based. You make super classes. Yeah. And and uh, a little hint: if you see it capitalized, if you see a variable named capitalized, it's typically a class, mm. because um, 
if you look at the code, I don't want to... <laughs> Uh-oh, we're going down another rabbit hole. Speaking of which, Vino lives down the rabbit hole. Anyway, and he doesn't yeah, agree with do Corey's ceiling is up and floor is downstairs. <laughs> not in my world. <laughs> <laughs> He's in, um, what's that called? Where does Alice go? Wonderland. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, $2. Uh, thank you, Vino, for the $2 super chat. Thank you, $2 for the Vino super chat. <laughs> thank you, $2 <laughs> for the Corey Davis super chat. <laughs> It's like, uh, I'm watching this on my head. <laughs> well, we kind of, we got a little derailed right there, but it's all good conversation and it's interesting things to think I about. Know, does Human have anything else he'd like to mention about the game? Absolutely. Human, do you have anything that you want to plug? Any um, Twitter? What's your Twitter account? Let us know. We'll put links. All right. Um, I just made a Twitter. So, guess people can join it or whatever. It's a Cratic Human. Can you, can you type, type that in? It the, in yeah, here. yeah. I mean, you can go. Uh, let's see. I'll find it and I'll link it, and then that way it'll be, it'll be in the chat at some point. Yeah, I would have spelled yeah. it wrong. I don't have any big plans to make anything huge. I need to like focus on doing more push-ups and stuff instead of making video <laughs> games. But um, you know, I do really like being part of the community. I like playtesting people's games, so feel free to send me stuff. Check that out. Oh, Drag is saying the floating point precision is also an is issue in C++ and Python. But how about C Sharp? I thought that was the one that doesn't have an issue. I wasn't specific about which C language, but I thought one of them solved that problem. Well. And that's why it's used for a lot of games. Mm, I know that uh, Unreal uses C Sharp, and I've used mm -hmm. a little C Sharp. I remember one night I had like a seven-page text file or 700 page text file and I was reading through it and I was like I'm gonna learn C sharp and that's yeah. not how it's not really <laughs> how you learn it um but it did help me like understand a little bit more because it's very complicated terminology mm -hmm. I linked it in the discord uh you guys can um find all kinds of useful links on the discord reading about how to code from a book is about as engaging as watching paint dry it is not fun but you know what is good <laughs> um is having a reference book yeah. Um, and I have a JS reference book, which I find invaluable. Yes. And Actually, I, I've read almost I half of that, that while taking dumps in the bathroom. That's when you read it. I mean, <laughs> I, I've, I've read that book a lot while I was waiting at the hospital um, yep. for multiple reasons throughout you know several months. And um, I found it to be very, very good. In fact, the same book that I use, the JS one, uh, it's an O'Reilly book. I think on Humble Bundle right now, for a dollar, you can get the PDF of the same one that I... I'm just talking up, really. Mm -hmm. And I linked that, as I typically do, in the Discord. Uh, let's see, where where would that be? I put it in, in uh, DevTools. So if you go here, you can you can find links to different uh, different stuff. Did I not put that one in there? Here's here's one that's like it, the Humble Book Bundle, um, O'Reilly Book. Wait, is that one it? I think that one's it. Um, Daryl coming in, coming in with some randomness over here. Is she based on a character, or is it just a nightmare from your mind? Are you having another conversation, Barrow? <laughs> I don't remember talking about anything like that. I found it. Here it is. So for one dollar on Humble Bundle right yeah. now, um, you That's can get the definitive guide to JavaScript. This one. I this O'Reilly book is... I think we have the pocket reference. It's though. a good reference yeah. book. Yeah. That's it's not the pocket to... reference. That's way bigger. This one's bigger and better oh, yeah. than the pocket reference that I have. But um, if you are oh, interested <laughs> in making a game or working on plugins, um, having this on hand is great, and you can have it uh, digital digitally for a dollar. So um, and it comes with these other things too. What's, but this is a cool bundle. I don't even know what those are. Maven H S S H. What are you talking about? Asterisk. Yeah, I don't know. There's I so mean, many coding languages. There's a million there. coding Jesus. languages. I've never heard of Spark. Hadoop. Let's learn Hadoop. <laughs> Heard of Mongo? Yeah, I've heard of Mongo. Um, yeah. Well, we derailed a little bit, nah. but that's fine. Um, human... Oh yeah, human has a question from the audience. I think. Oh yeah, let's hear it. What... Uh, is she based on a character, or is it just a nightmare from your mind? Everybody, you know, this is the looking girl we're talking about. I think. You guys think she's scary? She seems <laughs> totally fine to me. <laughs> she seems a little crazy. She's a little creepy. Um... Yeah. Tad, Plus, tad she creepy. has toxic spit, so yeah. that's always a catch-22. She's like a humanoid Komodo dragon or something. 
Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing is a lot of these limitations that we had in this jam were the reason that the characters were the way they were. Mm -hmm. Little Tina, like, I wanted to make a little kid who was kind of just tagging along, but uh, software had very few actual, like, pieces for kids. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, how can I make this look different? So I just made this absolutely pale little white girl. And I was like, you know, what would she be like? Is she kind of weird? And... um that's where all that weird creepiness She's came from. Poisonous. <laughs> She's venomous. <laughs> She's, yeah, so, I mean, be my mind is just generally a nightmare, but it just <laughs> came organically from the limitations. You know, that's how great stories are written. They flow from the mind like music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like this plug, and I forgot about this one, the extended DOT. It simplifies damage over time. I keep writing them in the buff state's core, but I don't exactly have to because it's got all of these nice little features inside. Uh, I'm going to add this into our um, next project that we work on together. Um, anything else you want to talk about, human? Um, not too much. I mean, I definitely want to highlight other other streamers and people I really like. Hawk Zombie, I've been following for a while, and kind of my entry into to game jams i think he he streams like five times a night off in rpg maker stuff so i think he's a great uh similar not really the same as you guys he's a different kind of streamer but i think he adds interesting stuff too he streams and, uh, five times a night five times a night <laughs> yeah he's that good wow <laughs> poor guy yeah, it's like five a times a week yeah it takes a couple nights off per, per week. Um, Studio Blue has this really cool series going on, too. It's their creator classroom. Mm -hmm. They're kind of walking people through some, some really interesting ways to tell stories and game dev. So I feel like people can learn a lot from that sort of thing. That's cool. I saw, I saw that advertised. I haven't popped in yet, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw a couple hours of it. I thought it was really interesting and, and worthwhile for people to avoid a lot of mistakes that um, like indie game devs might make. Yeah, I love Studio Blue. They are awesome. They've been very supportive of um, T and I and the family. And um, I can't say enough good stuff about Studio Blue. You should definitely go support them as well. Um, that's going to do it for us now. We're going to wrap up the live stream. We had a very, very... Um, fun time with you human thank yeah. you so much for coming on and talking great. about your project and whatnot yeah. thanks for inviting me it's been really awesome um he's got a new twitter go follow him on twitter he's going to post about all his new games in the future on that i'm sure and uh, that's that's it congratulations once again for winning the competition and uh, you're such a good person like you you deserve the name human you are such a good guy uh, we just want to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for participating and uh, everything you've done to be a part of this community. And uh, everybody who's watching, thank you guys again. We're going to end the live stream now. Read off the, the names in the chat. T, why don't you hit us with the names? Oh, okay. Let me get my <clears throat> <clears throat> advertiser voice on. <laughs> All right. Let's start from the bottom. Vino, thank you for joining us. Yorkshire Pud, Vero Claw 23 the real Tron, Psycho Gaming. Assumed identity. Assumed identity. Did I miss assumed? No, he identity? he said it at the oh, bottom. Okay, you were scrolling okay, up, and he right. popped in at the bottom. They do that to me every day. <laughs> okay, Boro B, thank you for joining us. Drag, the the amazing coding Actual genius. Actual Rosetto. Driftwood Gaming, thank you for coming to the stream. Huh? <laughs> oh yeah. Human, no human, human. I'm thank here. you for joining us and letting us look at your project today. Echoes 44 awesome of you to come. Also, Damian Floyd, thanks for being here, giving some awesome coding information. Who else? Who else? Who else? Jeff Babineau. And we have Tease Jams. Thank you for coming to the stream today. Wow, well, you're welcome. Flesh to Dust, Corey Davis. Don't wait, 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 wait. Sir Corey Von Davis, it is my show. No, it's my show. It's my I translated show. it. It's my show. Thank you for joining us. Who do I have? Who do I have? Did I miss anybody? I don't see anybody else. Um, you always have to say if you're lurking. Oh, if you're lurking and you yep. haven't commented. Telco, thank, you, thank for, you for coming. For watching. Thank you for watching. If I just missed your 
name. If, yeah, you said something, but I name. didn't say your name. And Still, I, thank sweet. You. Thank you for coming. That's your contingency. You know, <laughs> that's your that's your out for when like you. I I said hi and you didn't say hi to me. Oh, like, Pico I, the mouse. I think I got everybody. That's Pico the mouse. Oh, oh, by the way, by the way, guys, 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 guys. Make sure to hit that like button and this the bell thing. Oh, yeah, I never say that. Like Please it. subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you like it. Um, also back us on Patreon. All the other things that you can do to help us. Just come hang out on Discord. That's that's a really good thing. Uh, the Discord keeps growing, and we have a big, um, large group of minds that we can suck ideas out of when we need to. So come join the amalgamation of people uh, on the Discord links in the description below. Yeah, amalgamation. That's I planted that word in his head yesterday. You did. I, we it, wrote it on the table yeah. on this whiteboard because I, you I, said the game that we're going to work on has to be called this. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Can't we just talk about that with this live stream on Monday? You're like, nope. If it's not called this, I'm going to continue to call it that. And then you're just going to have two names for your game. It, no, it'll be amalgamation. I, that's what I'll say, but everybody else will call it by its real name. Uh, it'll be like, there's something of Blur's Yeah, and the I'll be amalgam- like, that's right, the but, amalgamation. But then it'll be like, cold. The amalgamation. <laughs> I mean, we could totally do that. It's very custom. It's searchable. You it's know? a cool word, okay? Amalgamation. Drag says, wait, I have a question for human. <gasps> okay. All right, you got a minute. Let's go, Drag. What's your question for human? Of course, there's a little delay on oh. that. It's sticking. Psycho says amalgamation. <laughs> Assumed mind control. Does the guys with the bow learn to use it at some point? <laughs> uh, well, if I had time, I would have made a lot of more awesome bow moves. I was planning on upgrading him to bling the bow at enemies and then kind of shoot like a thousand bow missiles at people. Mm-hmm. So, I think I, saw yeah, I mean, you, he does learn it. I, thought, I think I saw you demonstrating that. Did you post I, that? Yeah, I did. I posted something like that. Yeah. It looked pretty cool. So, I mean, he's not a traditional fighter, but he could he could do a lot his own way. That's cool. That's cool. It's too bad it, it didn't go in there. That definitely would have gotten me laughing, that move. Mm. Where he just, like, vomits out a thousand bows. It's great. <laughs> he's the special guy. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you, human. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will see you guys tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, um, where we will be doing another AMA. AMA, No, not AMA. That's today's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday, where we're going to do... Wait, tomorrow's Thursday? Yeah, the last... Oh, gosh. The last How Did They Do It for a week or two. I have to work tomorrow. I know, I know. Um, So, yeah. That's it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic one and all of the stuff. We've yeah, already mentioned coming everything. Yeah, now is now is now is going to explain his Power Rangers battle system to us. Yeah, I look forward to that. It's going to be fun. We'll, Me too. We'll have another good discussion. All right, bye guys. Bye. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Come tomorrow, two o'clock, EST. Yep. Twenty three hours from now. Ciao. Capiche. Don't be dead inside, Damien. We love you. What? Damien's He's dead got inside. the uh, expressionless face. Oh. Today's garbage day, and we remembered. Right. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Even though I didn't do it. <laughs> you have, Drifty you remembered. Have, you have I'm slaves. Proud of, I'm proud of Drifty. You have slaves. I mean children. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.